So at this point, we've done our initial setup of Reason. We have a demo sequence loaded. This is usually what Reason does by default. I'll show you how to change that in a moment. And now we want to make sure that everything is working. So first, let's try and play back the demo sequence. And we can do that easily by pressing the space bar. Let's do that now. And we just press the space bar to stop it. Pretty easy. Now, the other thing that I want to test is to make sure that my keyboard is working and controlling the instruments within reason. Now, by default, one of the instruments in my rack has been selected. And the one that's been selected for me to trigger is the one which has the red indicator light. We'll talk about this in much more detail later. But for right now, I'm just going to control this Kong drum machine, which is the one that has the red light. And I'm going to play some keys on my keyboard, and we'll see the note on light go on. And that all appears to be working fine. Now, what happens if something isn't working right? Well, the easiest way to change your settings is to go into Reason's Preferences. And we can get to Reason's Preferences from the Reason menu or by pressing the shortcut Command or Control Comma. Now, there are a couple different pages in Reason's Preferences. The first is a general page. And what I want to point your attention to is this default song area. This is where we determine what Reason does when we open a new song. Do we have an empty rack, the built-in demo sequence, or some kind of a custom template? So we can build a template and save that, and that becomes our default song when we open up a new sequence in Reason. You can also check this box to open up the last song on Startup. Now on the next page, the audio page, we can change any of our audio settings. So the audio device that I chose in my setup wizard can be changed here, as well as the sample rate. Now the buffer size controls latency. And what latency is, is the time between my pressing of a note on my keyboard and the time the sound is produced. Too high latency, and it makes it very hard to play your keyboard. So what you want to do is reduce the buffer size as small as you can. But if you reduce it too small, it stresses the system and you get pops and clicks. So set the buffer size as low as you can without getting pops and clicks. It may take some experimentation. I usually use 256 or 512, which seems to work for a pretty decently powered computer. There's also an area to set my clock source. If you know what that means and you have a clock source, you can set it here. If you don't, don't worry about it. Next up is the MIDI tab or the keyboard controller tab. And this is where I set up all the keyboards and controllers I want to use with Reason. Now the Korg Triton I set up earlier is there, but I have another keyboard, an actual control surface called a NanoPad, and I'm going to add that now. Now a NanoPad is one of the devices that Reason will recognize. So I'll choose that from the list. And once again, I'll use the Find button to determine what port the NanoPad is plugged into. It recognized the port. I'll choose that. I'll set my out port, in my case, to a NanoPad control. And now you can see I have two devices set up to control Reason. Here's my Korg. And here's my NanoPad. Works great. The next tab in Preferences is the Advanced tab. And we're not going to worry about this in this tutorial. And finally, there's the computer keyboard setup. We'll talk about that later, but this is how I can use my computer keyboard to trigger notes if I don't have a regular music keyboard. And that's a quick look at preferences in Reason.